What's your image of North Korea? It's probably negative. My name is David Pluth, and I'm going to take you on a very quick trip of North Korea that I hope will open your eyes and your mind to this fascinating country and its charming people. I've got my foreign journalist's credential on my arm. I'm ready to go. I hope you are too. Let's get started. It's my first morning in Pyongyang. I look out the window and I see more than 500 military trucks in the street. It's practice for a big parade. We're gonna go for a ride in the metro. Let's go. It's like commuters anywhere. They're in a rush to get to the next train. They get off one train, run to the next train, run outside. Just, it's anywhere. <laughs> Our first stop is at the memorial statue of Kim Il-sung, known as the Great Leader. He led North Korea from its founding in 1948 until his death in 1994, when he was succeeded by his son, Kim Jong-il. The spirit of Kim Il-sung, the father, still guides the country. In the entrance hall of the People's Library, we're greeted by a huge statue of Kim Il-sung. I'm expected. They heard somebody from Switzerland is coming. The People's Library is a correspondent university for technical and artistic teaching and retraining. Looking here at a, uh, an ancient Buddhist text, it was printed in 1377, I believe. It was the first Buddhist text uh, to be printed with metal type. Uh, it's an ancient classic. Uh, it's preserved here in the library. We go from ancient history to the newspapers read by Kim Il Sung and his son Kim Jong Il. The Great Mausoleum. A huge complex holding Kim Il-sung's body. Cameras are not allowed inside. 
Kim's political life began just 12 kilometers away from here, in a plain cottage. Born in 1912, Kim Il-sung's birthplace is now a museum. His birthday, the 15th of April, marks the beginning of the Ararang Mass Games. The games are held in one of the largest stadiums in the world, the May Day Stadium. One hundred thousand entertainers take part, half a football stadium with flashcards. The performance is just amazing. It goes on for two hours. It's like a complete history of Korea on stage. We're at the tomb of King Yangong, the ancient king who first united Korea more than a thousand years ago. He was a strong man with more than 30 wives and concubines. Deep inside his tomb are fascinating historical paintings. I'm told that behind these stone doors, there are still two steel gates that you have to go through, and there's 30 meters of walking on stone to get to the painting. And we don't have a key, so we're not getting in. But we'll come back and we'll try again. She'll have the key next time. <laughs> How long will it take us? How long will it take us? We head for Quezon. Uh, one and a half or two hours. Okay, the drive should take us one and a half to two hours through the countryside. Uh, the Namde Moon Gate in uh, Quezon. In ancient times, it was the main gate of the city. You can see through the, to the busy street on the other side. We're in a major circle in the town. Um, lots of traffic here. As you can see. It's a nice gate. It's very beautifully made. Kaesan is an ancient city. These old Buddhist temples were built during the Koryo dynasty in the Middle Ages when Korea